Okay. So we're getting ready to post another video doing a door for Sean over in the West Coast in Tampa. Um, I get a lot of emails and questions about uh, the product the, that we use, what product do you use, where do you get it, and all this. So I thought we'd make a little segment here where I explain what I'm using and and uh, how we mix it and how we make our colors and stuff like that. All right. So this is called Tropical Scumble. It's made by Polyvine. It's a company over in England. And uh, this stuff is awesome. It's a latex, water-based glaze. Ex extremely durable. Um, and also the working time is amazing. We've worked in direct sunlight on 23 foot walls and still was able to keep a wet edge. So it's, it's really amazing stuff. All right, so we got a double door that we're getting ready to do. So we just take the glaze. Here, come on over here. Take the glaze, dump about maybe half a quart in there. Quart, half a quart. All right. So that's the glaze. This is transoxide colorants from Faux Effects. All right. I think you uh, have to be a member of Faux Effects, take one of their classes before you can start ordering their products. Or you, I don't know, you might be able to buy stuff online. But this is where I get my 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 basic wood color to um, start graining the door. All right, it's a, it's a it's a stock that we start with. All right, so I take about probably half the bottle because it's very translucent. I would say four or five really good squirts will get you started. Then, to because that's so transparent, we want to sort of flesh out the color and, and give it some uh, give it some uh, density to where it's not too see-through, and, and you know we're able to cover a little bit. I take golden acrylics; these are really good products, and and. Um, these darken the color down and, and give it a little bit of body. But this right here is, is what makes your glaze look like stain. It has that nice glow to it. All right, so now we're gonna take a little bit of black. some black in there. I put quite a bit because we're trying to match the front doors that are pretty dark. And then we take a little bit of raw umber. All right. Give it a little bit of earthy tone. We're gonna have a nice, rich, brown, dark mahogany stain. All right, so that's the basic dark brown mahogany color. You can always tweak it however you want. If you want it to look a little bit more burgundy, drop a little bit of magenta in there. All right, so we got our colors all dipped in there. Now we're gonna start stirring it up. There we go, we got a nice, dark, rich, look at that nice brown glaze. We're getting ready to do the wood. Um, uh, the last time we made 
videos and stuff, I get emails of people. Oh, you're supposed to go this way. You're supposed to go that way. You're supposed to put the tape. Everybody does it the way they want to do it. The reason why I always tried to go this way is because the texture of the door is going that way. And I didn't want to go against the texture because you can see it through the grain. However, in this case, we got these vertical slats going like this. So that gives us lots of room to, to play with that. And, and we have to go that way. So that's why we're going vertical here. And I, I don't tape it off. I think it's a waste of material. You know, so we just do a panel and then come behind and go over the top of it. You can call that whatever you want. I'm just trying to be efficient. So, brush on the panel, nice and thick. You gotta put the glaze on, oops. You gotta put the glaze on pretty thick because you want to show pattern. If the glaze is too thin, you're not gonna be able to sh show any pattern. All right, so that seems easy enough, right? Just brush on the glaze, get it completely covered. Man. <laughs> no, no, no pink, no pink showing through. You got heavy glaze on there. Now you just, you know, make your make your grain pattern. And I'm using just a regular two-inch nylon latex brush. And I know I've evolved. I use all different kinds of brushes for graining, but you can start putting the grain in like that. highlight with a dark sharp line going on the side you can do that and you can make uh, some broader grain patterns it's nice and cool out today probably about 70 degrees right yeah it feels like about that 70 degrees perfect weather to do some wood grain. And every once in a while too, you can just drag a lot of glaze off and then come back and do that to create a, a real broad highlight in there. And if you do that every once in a while, don't do it every other panel to make it look like a checkerboard, but like do one there and then one down there and then one over there and then one way over there. And it helps add to the natural randomness of wood when it's stained. Right. Tight patterns. Every once in a while we'll throw a knot in. This isn't really knotty wood, but I'm gonna duplicate mahogany garage doors and if these were real mahogany doors probably be about ten thousand dollars for a set of real mahogany doors all right so Julian's gonna keep get going with that I'm gonna keep going this way and this glaze is really workable you don't have to worry about that setting up because by the time he gets there and starts doing it, it reactivates. So there's no edge there. This stuff is really, really good. Polyvine makes an incredible product. And I love using it. Demonstrate a knot 
So if you want to put a knot, the thing about knots is people, when they're new at doing this, they get real excited because it looks so good. So they end up, you know, doing knots on every other board. And then next thing you know, they got a polka dotted door. So the philosophy with knots is less is more. So. What you do is just sort of drag your brush up, twist it around, and then sort of come around to it. And then usually there's like a little stem that comes out. So you just sort of come up sideways like that. I like to get a dark line going in there because it makes it look like maybe you got two colors going, like a black and a brown. And the way you do that is just sort of hold the brush sideways and it creates a dark line and then you just sort of go over it very softly. You know? your finish and that's another thing these are all water-based products I do not recommend using anything but complete water-based products from the base coat to the glaze to the clear cut because you will be redoing your door protective clear coat on it's still just a little bit damp but when you spray the clear coat on 
spray the clear coat on, it uh, sort of atomizes it and accelerates the drying. So. Here we go. that other side sprayed so there it is so we'll pull the paper and then show you what it looks like when we're all done all right, all right so we're all done it's finished up barely ran out of daylight got everything clear cut pulled the tape off cleaned up the edges painted the rod iron with a happy customer that's right definitely so my business is Z Frame and Decorative Painting. My email is zack1000 at yahoo.com. Z-A-K-K-1000. And uh, if you're interested in having your door done, just give us a reach out to us. And we also uh, we do the epoxy garage floors too. If you want to put one of those uh, epoxy finishes on your floor, we do those too.